Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I am so excited to share with you today. I'm going to share some new products. Woohoo! <laughs> it is, let's see, it's Tuesday. It's not Wednesday today. It's Tuesday, May 14th, 2019. And I have to apologize, I still have not figured out the problem with the lighting in here. Ever since I moved my um, broadcasting area from over on that side of the table, <laughs> to over here, I've been having issues with lighting. Um, my main concern, of course, is to have enough lighting on the table when I demonstrate. So we'll just keep working on that. Maybe my dad, who is coming tomorrow to work on my tables, can help me figure it out. He, that's the reason why I had to shift this to today. Hey, Michelle is with us and Vicki. Hi, gals. Um, so hopefully we'll figure something out. But yes, so tomorrow, I cannot broadcast because my parents are coming into town tonight and tomorrow my dad would like to have that day to work on finishing off my table surfaces. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, that's broadcasting day. I got to make sure <laughs> that um, I am out of the room for him. Hey Terry. Hi Deb. Hi Kathy. How are you guys? Hi Brina. Awesome. So I'm going to share with you new products today. Um, and it's really fun because it's the beautiful Magnolia Lane suite of products. I'm going to show you a fun fold as well. Hey, Catherine. Um, so, uh, <laughs> did, no, I did not get my catalogs all ready for mailing. They just came yesterday and I had, I have to broadcast three times today. I just broadcasted in a demonstrator group. I'm broadcasting to you guys now. And then I have a presentation at two o'clock. Um, my, my son has a concert tonight. And so I have a feeling I'll just be up all night working on uh, packaging up those catalogs into, <laughs> into the envelopes. So yes, it's, it's new catalog time. Oh my goodness sake, so much fun. And along with the new catalogs comes new products. So let's go right to my um, desktop computer, my laptop computer here, and I can show you. We'll make sure we have a little picture of me there for people who um, need to read my lips. Okay, so there we go. We have the Magnolia Lane Arrow Fold Card. I got the Arrow Fold, fold Card idea from um, Samantha Clayton, who is somebody who I've followed before, but my, my friend um, Averla Carpenter, she alerted me to this wonderful fold that Samantha had shared on her mixedupcrafts.com site. And so we're going to do a version of it using the cardstock size that typically Stampin' Up! makes their cards with, and that's the 8.5 by 11 size. So your Whisper White cardstock, and not thick, you want to have the regular cardstock because you want it to have a little bit of thinness to it, um, is a good base to start with. You could also use Very Vanilla if you wanted to do another version of it, but definitely don't use super thick cardstock on this fun fold. Um, Whisper White cardstock, it's, it starts out the same as most cards. Um, but we're going to be doing some cutting, and so it's kind of hard to explain all of that in the measurements, which is why I'm doing a video. And then um, you'll need a scrap for the little centerpiece for the card. And of course, we're going to be using some beautiful designer paper. I'm making a very simple version of this card because you could actually do two layers. You could have the Magnolia Lane designer paper and a layer underneath, but I'm trying to keep it simple. Um, cause I like, I love it when new stampers join in. Um, then the other supplies you'll need are the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set, the dies that go with it, and all the rest of the products that are in black font are current, things that you can get now. The things that are in the blue font are upcoming. Now the only way to get those things are if you're a current demonstrator, if you're signing up to get the starter kit, um, which means you could put that new stuff in your starter kit order or you can get it after you're a demonstrator. Um, or if you have a really good friend who's <laughs> a demonstrator. I'm just kidding. Basically, you all have to wait, if you're not a demonstrator, until June 4th, and that is when the new catalog debuts. But that's only a, what, is that less than, is that less than three weeks away now? Maybe it's three weeks away. All right, so let's go back to um, getting things ready on my desk here. I am fanning out the beautiful papers. Now, while I'm broadcasting, Oh, good. It's good to see more people saying hello. Hi, Eileen from Canada, and Cindy's from Canada, too. Um, if, if, if you chime in and you comment while I'm doing this live broadcast on Facebook, um, then you can get entered into the first prize drawing. 
The second prize drawing, which we'll do a week from now, you can get in on by commenting after the live um, or of course during the live as well. So please feel free to comment. Um, tell me where you're from. Give some tips that I might not share during this video. Um, like I've forgotten them or I didn't even know them. Um, say hello to each other, make jokes. Um, I love it. I love seeing what you guys write. Now I have to also tell you that it is super hard. Facebook makes it difficult for me to respond to all of those comments. Um, in a thread where there's 300 or more comments, it, it kind of slows things down. So just know that if I click like on your comment, um, I read it and I acknowledged it and I loved it. I just can't, it takes like three times as long just to respond. It's crazy, it's crazy. Um, I hope that, stamp, uh, that Facebook can make that easier for us soon. But enough about my woes, let's get to the desktop here. Okay, so you can see, oops, hang on a minute. You can see in front of you this beautiful Magnolia Lane paper. This is a new designer paper that will become available again June 4th. Double-sided, you get two full sheets of each. Sorry about the lighting, it's really weird right now. That is pink on the end there. There we go, now you can see it. Look green for a minute. Um, there's petal pink in here, mossy meadow, basic black, whisper white, um, so saffron, lots of beautiful colors. So we're gonna use a portion of that paper. The coordinating stamp set is in two boxes. <laughs> um, look at that, you get some wonderful sentiments with it, a beautiful, fun little design element stamp and stamp image, and then of course the flowers, a huge flower. This requires a super large block. <laughs> and then a small flower and leaves, of course. So, um, gosh, you're gonna want this. It is so pretty. <laughs> I just, I'm so glad that we got to pre-order this one. And here are the dies that coordinate with those images. So if we just take this one, for example, which is the one we're going to use, and we lay it over the top of this image, you can see how awesome is that. You don't have to fussy cut that out. Now, if you're somebody that does not own a die cutting embossing machine, you can always hand cut this. It's not like there's a lot of detail to go around. Um, so, but I will be die cutting for my card. Again, you don't need to have the big shot for it, but it, it's helpful. So we're gonna keep that die out. We're gonna bring in the trimmer. And I, I know, right, Rose? Um, she said, beautiful paper and stamp set. So we're gonna bring in the trimmer. This is our basic Whisper White cardstock. And it is in um, eight and a half by 11 size. So half of 11 is five and a half inches. This trimmer, by the way, is retiring, so I will just refer to it as a trimmer. You can use any paper cutter. We're gonna go ahead and slice this in half with the cutting blade. We, we can save this for another card. Um, actually, we're gonna be using that for the scrap. We need that for a scrap. And then let's rotate it this way. So this is eight and a half this way. Half of that is four and a quarter. So that's where we're gonna put the score line. Again, just basic, basic card making in the beginning part. You'll want to fold that completely, and you'll want to have a bone folder for this card. It's really important to have something that's gonna help give it creases. Kendra said she lived in a town named Magnolia. Oh my goodness sakes, how beautiful. That sounds like a wonderful place to live. <laughs> All right, so we have that. Thanks for sharing that, Kendra. We have that set up. Um, we need to cut our paper. And then we're gonna keep our trimmer handy because we'll need to cut a few um, diagonal cuts. So let's enter this end in. We want a four by five inch piece. So we've got, this is five inches wide here and we wanna cut it to four inches. We can set that aside to use for another card. Now on our Whisper White and our designer paper, we wanna put some pencil marks. So I'm gonna flip this one over and we'll start with that one. We're just gonna, we're gonna figure out, this is gonna be the bottom, bottom front. So I wanna put a little halfway mark on the bottom front. I'm bringing in a ruler. And again, this is five inches all the way across. So half of five inches is two and a half. So I'm just gonna make a little pencil mark there. Now you probably can't see it from where you're at. Let's see if you can zoom in just a tad. So I put a pencil mark right here and I want it to be right on the edge, okay? And then the other pencil marks are gonna be on the front of our Whisper White base. 
So determine which, which side is going to be your front. And then you want to put three halfway marks. We're going to put one at two and a quarter because that's half of five and a half. We want to put one at two and an eighth. Did I say two and a quarter? Two and three quarters. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so two and a quarter. Um, Margaret says you can't imagine why they're retiring it. Um, yeah, it's it's a favorite. It's definitely, I mean, I don't think Stampin' Up! wanted to retire it, by the way. Um, it's, it's a supply issue more than anything. Uh, the company that they're working with, um, there's been supply issues with just getting cutter, repl cutter blade replacements for a long time now, which a lo obviously a lot of us are aware of now. And so um, it's just made it tough to use this as a, as a supply item when you can't get certain parts of it. So now we're going to bring this into our trimmer. And we're going to use the mark that we made halfway here and the score line that goes right through the middle of the card. We're going to use those two points and we're going to connect with just a score line. We're not cutting, we're just going to connect. So I'm going to take my scoring blade and if you have like a score pal or score tool or the simply scored or something like that, you can definitely use those um, items to... <laughs> Okay, don't laugh. I am, I'm starting to use my reading glasses more, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel old. Okay, so I have my, <laughs> my cardstock in here, and I'm going to score from my little point there all the way up to there, and then I'm going to turn it just slightly, and I'm going to do the same thing with, <laughs> and I know, a lot of you empathize with me because you have to do the same thing. But seriously, when you have to wear reading glasses on the end of your nose, you don't feel young anymore. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna connect this point to that point. So we wanna make sure it's in there. And you wanna get very precise, as Samantha Clayton will tell you in her video that she did. Um, this really relies on being precise. Okay, so we have two score lines, one diagonally this way and one that way. We're gonna rotate it and do it again on this side. All right, and score. <laughs> I, I have all kinds of jokes I could tell about glasses. I don't know. So my, 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 um, my eye doctor said I could always wear one contact and not wear the other one. And then I'd have uh, an eye that is dominant for distance and dominant for up close. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thanks, Carol. <laughs> Welcome to the club. I love it. Okay, so this one's going to get cut. So we want to cut from that little mark that we made down here in the middle to this upper corner. So we're going to put that in here. And see, I don't even remember to put them on if my eyesight's good enough. Like right now, if I blink, it actually clears up. Do you guys know that? <laughs> if you blink, sometimes it works. Because now I'm seeing clearly. Okay, we're going to set that aside. And we're going to <laughs> make this one go over here and trim. I don't know. It's inevitable. We're lucky if we can grow old, right? Okay, we just have to suffer as we do it. So we have those pieces ready to go. <laughs> the last thing that we wanna do to prepare is to stamp our big, huge stamp. Now I have this on the block that is size F. So this is our largest clear block that you can get and look at, it takes up a lot of room. It's almost as big as a background stamp, it's huge. So for a stamp like this, which is rubber, it's red rubber, so we don't need the piercing mat underneath, um, the stamp and pierce mat, I should say. Um, I like to ink it going this way, so I'm going to keep my table steady <laughs> so that it's not shaking. It's shaking on you guys, sorry. Um, but we're pouncing the pad on top of the stamp rather than the stamp on top of the pad. And you just wanna go around to make sure the ink is nice and fresh and it's covering all the areas. The larger the stamp, the longer it takes to ink it up. <laughs> so that should be ready to go. We'll turn it upside down. We'll stamp it. And we'll press. <laughs> hey, Tiffany, glad you could join again. I love seeing all my familiar names show up. You guys are awesome. And there's Barb Perkins again. You did monovision. That's what they call it. Okay, monovision. And it worked. I'm going to read your comment again. Hang on. And you loved it. Actually, my 
Oh, well, maybe I should just train my eye then, because seriously, I am not ready. I, you know, if I had glasses, they could fix it within the glasses, and I wouldn't have to, but I have contacts. Okay, enough about my problems. <laughs> Let's bring in the big shot and cut this really quick. I have to zoom out a tad so that you can see. All right, so we're going to bring this in. Um, we'll position it that way. If you are new to a die cutting machine, the Big Shot is also retiring because of supply issues. <laughs> so um, yeah, we don't have to go there today, but just know that these tools, I'm just kind of calling general names, are our die cutting machine. So you wanna put your die on there. Can you see that? We have a weird funky glare going on. Let's go like that. Can you see it now? So the die is positioned around our image and we're gonna lay our cutting mat on top and we'll crank it through. Again, you could fussy cut this. This is not a necessary thing to have for this card, but if you do have a die cutting machine, oops, sorry, oh my goodness, lots of glare, hang on. If you do have a die cutting machine, you will want to invest in these dies because this is just gorgeous. We're gonna cut something off here though that we don't need because it's too big. This image is actually too big, so we're gonna hand trim around the flower. There we go. Now you could use that leaf for another part of your card, but we just want the flower. So let's go ahead and get, which some, something I forgot, an extra piece of grid paper. We'll just use this one here. Um, just so that we have a nice thick surface here because we're gonna start blending. This is where the glasses are gonna come in handy. So let's zoom in. And if you have not used Stampin' Blends markers before, oh my gosh, you have to try these out. They are so much fun. Okay, all right, sorry, I gotta scroll through the comments. I'm missing a few, oh my goodness. Hey, Eve is from Australia, she's joining us. Thank you, Eve. Okay, let's start with the Dark petal pink. So blends that we sell um, come, in, <laughs> come in two color combos, the light and the dark. You can get them together in a combo or you can get them separately, light and dark. Um, that way, if you use up one color a lot, one of the shades a lot, you can always replace just the one. Um, I tend to use the light a lot. We're gonna use the petal pink and we're gonna use the dark one. We're also gonna be using Mossy, Me uh, Mossy Meadow. So that's a green. And we're gonna be using Daffodil Delight because we don't have a So Saffron blends right now. Um, so let's put on the glasses again. <laughs> and what I, what I want to tell you is I, I really think that this helps me the most is when I start with the dark and I then come in with the light. Um, one other thing that's a favorite of mine is starting with the light, doing the dark, and then coming in with the light again. But I always finish with the light for some reason. I think the light um, helps to blend the most. So you can see I'm just going around at the base of all of these petals, and I'm adding a little tinge of pink. Oh, that was a leaf. <laughs> that was a leaf. Don't, cuddle, don't color that pink. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Now we're gonna come in with the light. We'll fix that, we can fix it. And we're gonna blend that dark out a bit. And you can see that this pink is so super light that it almost blends from pink to white. It's incredible, little fuzz. It's incredible how light this pink is. It just really does um, a beautiful job at, at, at making it look just like the designer paper. I'll show you here, let's bring in the designer paper. I mean, look at that. You can kind of see that similar look in the designer paper. There's another pattern in the designer paper that is just like this flower. I'll have to pull that one out. But b yeah, basically I'm just taking and pulling that color out from the middle and just you know making it gradually get lighter and lighter. Okay, so you'll want to cap your pens um, make sure that they're capped tightly. Always hear that click because this is an alcohol-based color um, that will dry out if you do not keep it airtight. So always cap your pens. Let's come in with the light now. This is the light, dark, light way of coloring. So I'm gonna start with the light. 
And I think this is a dark enough color where, yeah, see, we're not going to be affected too much by my error. <laughs> so we're going to come in with our light green. This is a light mossy me uh, meadow. I keep wanting to call it mellow. And we're just going to color two leaves at a time. And it's okay if we don't get all the white areas because eventually I'm going to color over the whole thing. But I want to get a base down. And then when I have this base, I'll be able to come in with my dark marker and it'll already start to blend. It already will start to bleed into the light color. So I'm going to start in the middle and bring the color from the middle outward because I want the lightest part of my leaf to be on the edges. You can follow the shading that is in a stamp. So um, for example, there's shading along here. You could definitely add dark in that area. Um, there we go. Okay, so now that you've added a little bit of darkness to those two leaves, and you can see it's not very blended, but with this last step of adding the light again, we're going to use a circular motion and draw that color into the light area. So it's going from dark to light, and it's, it's like magic. It's crazy how awesome this is. Blends markers are wonderful for be, you know making you feel like an artist, even if you never considered yourself one. I mean, look at the comparison here. Is that amazing? It really, and you can keep working on it. And the more you manipulate the color, the more it will blend. And if you look at the back side, it goes through. So that's why you want to have your surface protected with some grid paper. But we're just using the coloring technique with blends because I feel like it gives the most realistic look um, and the most comparable look to the pattern that is already in the designer paper, which I told you I was going to share. Let me show you that one again. So here is a good comparison. I mean, it's almost identical, right? So fun stuff. You can get some great results. So we're going to come in on this side now. Um, some other things about to note about blends. I mean, this isn't a blends 101 class, but because I'm just going to color this one piece and it's going to be quick. But um, things to note about the blends is that you have two tips. You have a brush tip, which is my favorite. I love using the brush tip, as you can see. And then you have a fine or bullet point, I should call it, tip. Um, you'll want to keep your markers uh, laying down flat when you're storing them. Don't store them vertically because that way the ink stays even at both ends. So here is the bullet tip. And you can color with that too. It just gives you a more um, direct type of coloring, uh, more focused, but you do have, I mean, the brush tip does come to a fine point, so you can get um, a pretty detailed look using just that too. I don't know why I prefer the brush tip. I think because I get a lot of color at once. I don't have to press too hard. All right, and then the last step is, of course, to do a circular motion to get that color to blend outward. So we're doing this step now because the fun fold, once we start it, you're just going to be like, oh my gosh, don't stop, don't stop. You're going to love it. This card is so fun. We always want a new fun fold. Now, some of you may already know this fun fold because it's been out there for a while. Um, I believe Samantha shared it oh, about a year ago, I want to say her video was out, but I, it's new to me. I haven't seen it before. Oh, in the middle. We got to do the middle. So again, we don't have So Saffron right now. We currently just have Daffodil Delight, but the Daffodil Delight works just as well. Awesome. Okay, we're ready to roll. I chose this designer paper for the card base rather than this one because this one is very, very busy and I didn't want this huge flower to get lost in it, okay? So the next step is to do our awesome folding. So we have the front of our card, which is right here, and you can see, you can sort of see those score lines maybe. There they are. So there are the score lines and we're gonna start folding on them. So the first fold that we're gonna do is going to go this way, okay? 
use your bone folder and we're going to crease. Hi, Susan. <laughs> yes, that is the wonderful thing about Facebook Lives is you can go back, even though you know they're live at the time, you can go back and watch the recording. Um, and I do post this on YouTube. In fact, I'll be sharing it on YouTube on Saturday. That's typically the day I share it. Now fold back the opposite way for the other two folds. Um, so that those people who aren't on Facebook, you can catch it on YouTube. And when I post it on YouTube, I can also um, embed it into my blog post to go along with photos. So I'll be sharing close-up photos of this card, the supplies, the measurements again, in case you didn't get like a, a screenshot of the measurements. Okay, so now we have that and we have this fold. And you'll notice that, you know, it, it pops up. It doesn't lie flat very well. So we need to assist it, and we're gonna use our Tombow Multipurpose Liquid Glue to do that. So you just grab your uh, green, we call it the green glue, it's not green. <laughs> it just has a green little container. But you're just gonna put a light amount of glue, because you don't want it to squeeze and ooze out. You're just gonna put it there and press it down. Do the th same thing on this side. Put it right in this section. Sorry, I'm squeezing lightly, so it's taking me a while to get it to come out. And fold that down that way. And then you can take and reinforce it. You can press that glue in there and make sure it's evenly spread underneath. And now we wanna lift up these two flaps. And keep in mind that when you're, when you're gluing, sorry for the brightness there. When you're gluing this flap down, that you have this angle here, so you don't want to glue beyond that point, but it helps to put the glue on this side rather than on that side, okay? So you'll just put the glue in through here and press it down, and again, reinforce it with the bone folder. If you find any glue that seeps out, try to wipe it away. Okay, and then we'll go to this side, do the same thing, and press it down. So now, we're gonna set this aside. See how much nicer that is? It's, it, it lies flat now. Um, so we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on getting some adhesive on these pieces. Now you wanna put your puzzle back together. So I have to picture how this goes again here. Ah, ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> Hang on, we had it there. These two go this way and, is that it? No, that's not it either. You guys are all, oh, there we go. <laughs> the stress of being live. Oh my gosh, I can't put a puzzle together. Okay, so <laughs> we have it ready. Now we wanna flip the whole thing over together. <laughs> Sorry about that. Puzzle stress, all of a sudden. And I love puzzles, I don't know what it was. I was just not seeing it for a minute. Grab your snail adhesive. Now you could use the liquid glue on the back of these pieces, but I am not a liquid glue fan overall. I just, I love it for this kind of stuff because it's definitely going to stick and hold. Um, and it's much easier than doing like the tear and tape on that piece. But for this, we're just gonna keep the whole thing together and we're gonna put adhesive all the way around the four sides. And the reason why I'm keeping it together is because of sections like this. You see that? If we keep that together and we put the adhesive all the way down, it's gonna cross over into those little corners, those tight corners of those pieces. And then at this point, you can pull it apart, but keep it in puzzle order, <laughs> and, then, and then add more adhesive. Now, if you have not commented yet, just know that if you're watching live, um, you can get in on this first prize drawing, so please add a comment, say hello, um, tell us where you're from, okay? All right, so now we're gonna add this piece right here in the middle, and you just wanna center it as much as possible. You're gonna notice that when you lay this down that there is um, a little bit more white up in this section than down here, but if you cut the pieces so that they're exactly a quarter of an inch smaller in both directions, you're gonna have problems with fitting the pieces in. You have to use that crazy math um, where this direction is a half inch shorter and this direction is a quarter inch shorter. I tell ya. 
Then this piece is just going to scoot up into this section here. And again, just center it the way it looks appealing to you. I like to have a little white edge showing in that spot. And then this piece, the same thing. Try to, try to make those two look pretty darn even. Okay. So, gorgeous, right? Because you can see the design flow because I put the puzzle piece together the right way. <laughs> now on the inside of the card, we want to stamp a sentiment. And we have lots of we have lots of sentiments, here they are. We have lots of sentiments to choose from. Um, we have the um, thinking of you, uh, not only for what you do, but for being someone so special. Enjoy today. Um, I think I'm gonna stamp this other one though, because I love the message in it, and it's reminding me of something I would love to say to a really good friend of mine. So I'm gonna ink this one up, and I haven't put the labels on my stamps yet, you guys, but I know that this is, yeah, this is the top. Um, and I can kind of eyeball it. So here we go. Um, please be straight, please be straight. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I'm bringing it closer to me to make it straight here. Okay. All right, so there we go. The journey of life is best shared with a friend. We'll get through this together. Okay. So there's that. Now we're gonna bring in the last of our supplies that I haven't used yet with you. We're gonna be using our pearls, our dimensionals, and we need our bone folder one more time. So let's grab those. Did you see the finished one? Did I just share the finished one? Hopefully not. I don't want you to see it yet. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna curl up the petals of the flowers. It's such a fun card, Gloria. I'm so glad that you came and joined us, even if you didn't see it from the beginning. Thanks for joining. So I'm just curling up the petals a bit so that they have a little bit of a dimension to them. Um, and then we're gonna add that to the front of the card in this spot like that. So let's just stick them on with dimensionals. Now keep in mind that when you're adding dimensionals underneath um, a flower in a small spot here or whatever, if anything sticks out over the edge, you might have adhesive behind it so be careful like I'm gonna stick a dimensional down like right there so I know that that's where that one's gonna go and then I'm gonna put two back here and I'm not gonna put them under the leaves because the leaves I want to be able to have pop up still right it is a beautiful sentiment isn't it Karen I know I love it um, now if I could get it in the mail to her <laughs> okay so we're gonna peel those off Stick this down. Wink of Stella. I thought about that last night. It would be beautiful on here. I'm not adding it this time, but that would be a beautiful addition. But you could also use pearls or rhinestones. Rhinestones would be great. Let's open up these pearls. Um, you could use your take your pick tool, or um, before we had the take your pick tool, I used my snips and just kind of picked them up and laid my pearls down. So these can just go anywhere. By the way, if you hear loud noise in the background, it's because it's a beautiful day here in Minnesota. I am in Andover, Minnesota, for those of you that don't know where I'm from, and we are going to be experiencing the most beautiful weather today. Um, I don't remember what the forecast was, but I was told that it's going to be hot at the band camp concert tonight in the gym, and that uh, we may want to dress accordingly. And I'm like, that means it's gonna be comfortable for me because <laughs> I like being warm. I still have my turtlenecks on. <laughs> I'm crazy, I know. So just adding a few little pearls here and there just to give it a little touch of elegance and then on the inside. So that's called an arrow fold card. I made the exact same one just with a different section of the paper. So there's a bit of the flower look coming down here. So there's Two arrow fold cards. We'll just open that one up so you can see the inside. And yeah, isn't this fun? I have to make more of these. In fact, I've already started making a few um, with some of the other supplies. We have this mosaic paper. I haven't figured out how to make that one look right yet. And then we have this beautiful green paper. I can't remember the name of it, but it's all these different greens. And oh my gosh, that card is turning out really fun too. I'm so excited to share that with you. Let me get the computer set up so that we can do some prize drawings here. 
I have updates on my computer. It's like, give me updates. Okay, let me let me bring you to my website here first, okay? So let's take this off and set that up. Okay, so here is my website, stampyourartout.com. It's on the um, editing portion of it, but that's okay. All you see is this black bar across. <laughs> if you go to the shop button when you're on my website, whether you're on the blog portion of my website or just the front page like this, but you click on shop, and you scroll down to product shares, you're gonna be able to see photos of lots of the new products that are becoming available in the new catalog. Oh! So if you scroll down, you can see a lot of those new products. Um, little pictures of each and every one of the things that I got to purchase early that is part of my shares. Now it's not showing stamp sets and that sort of thing, but if you're interested in getting some consumables, um, in product shares, there's the Magnolia paper, you can click on that section and um, let me know if you're interested. I'm taking signups through the beginning of June, so not not out, not once the new catalog starts, so you'll want to get on, in on those shares soon if you're interested. Let's go to Facebook. Let's pull up the video that we are currently on, and we're going to put, actually, let's, let's pull up last week's, you guys. I'm sorry, I always do ours first. Okay, um, let's pull up last week's, which isn't this one, because this one was a special one. Hopefully you saw that. That was part of a live hop. Um, we're going to pull up the Flowers for You Hanging Pillow Box. And let me just copy that really quick. We're going to put it into our comment picker. And we're going to draw a winner from last week's, um, or two weeks ago, I should say. <laughs> two weeks ago, that broadcast. So here we go. Let's click the start button and find out who is going to get the Calypso Coral Satin Ribbon and the Fun Brads. Linda Davis. Congratulations to Linda from two weeks ago for that video. Hopefully this will find her because last time it did not find my winner. It doesn't look like it's clicking on my winner this time for some reason. So I'm going to just say it right here because it, it took me forever to get a hold of last week's live hop winner. Um, please hear for your name <laughs> and get a hold of me because going through 432 comments to find Linda Davis's name is going to be really hard. <laughs> so Linda Davis, if you're out there, please contact me. If somebody knows Linda Davis, tell her to get a hold of me because it's not linking right to their comment anymore. Um, hopefully the rest of you stayed live with me. Let's go back to the videos. I'm gonna do a refresh, so anybody else who wants to get in on the prize drawing, what are we gonna draw for today, Rachel? Oh, you know what, let's go to the desktop and find that out. Moving the cards out of the way. Okay, so the prize for today doesn't really have to do with what I shared, and I'm so sorry about that. But um, <laughs> it's been busy around here. I haven't been planning my prizes very well. I have uh, a box of these beautiful shimmery white gable boxes, um, a whole container full of them, and I have some rhinestones, a whole pack of rhinestones. I have an opened but full box of the silver gable boxes and another pack of rhinestones. What can you make with gable boxes? Well, there's all kinds of fun things you can do with them. You can emboss on them and you can decorate them up. This is using some of our older product, but um, a fun, fun way to give candy out. Um, you can also alter the box and make it look different. So this one, I not only embossed, but I turned it into kind of a toolbox looking thing. So just by slitting a straw through there and folding those other flaps inward. Um, but yeah, gable boxes are fun. I'm so sad that they are retiring, but I will not be able to use these anymore. And again, I apologize that this one is open. I was going to use it and didn't. <laughs> so, so let's go back to the computer and let's draw a winner. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to do a, re a screen refresh and we'll grab, grab the link from the live video today. All right. Here we go. Magnolia Lane. I am in love with this stuff. Okay, let's go to the comment picker. Linda Davis, please reach me because I don't know how to reach you. <laughs> All right, so out of 123 that are with us commenting, 
Who is going to be the lucky one out of 123 people? Drum roll. Brrr. The winner is Linda Coleman Yamakito. Congratulations. Let's see if it goes right to your comment. It probably won't. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Oh my gosh, it wasn't gonna go to her anyways though. But Linda, please get a hold of me. <laughs> you can message me through my personal page, through my Facebook page. Um, I'll be able to go back and find her name and um, not actually, I, I won't be able to find her name. Never mind. I won't be able to click on you, but I'll be able to remember her name when I watch the video. <laughs> so those two people are the lucky winners. I'm so very happy for you guys. Um, next week, we are sticking with the regular schedule. We're going to go back to Wednesdays at 11 for the next two weeks, but summer is approaching. And so I want to tell you that if you are wanting to mark your calendar so you don't miss one of my lives, because I love it when you join me, um, make sure that you click on events in my Facebook page. There's an events section that you can go to, and I try to keep it updated for the next two, three, right now I have it updated for like the next two months. So peek in there and mark your calendar. I have a couple weeks where I'm not going to be able to be there because either I'm out of town or I don't know, something's happening. But I will try to keep up with this throughout the summer. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. Um, I think that's it. So visit back on my blog on Saturday so you can get the photos and the measurements again and the details uh, from this video once more. Um, thank you all for joining me. I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out now. Bye-bye.